All right, guys, this is the second video about Adobe Illustrator. Um, I already have my template open here. That's kind of what we learned in video one. Uh, the thing I want to talk about right now is how we communicate to the um, laser cutter what processes we want it to do. How do we tell it to cut, engrave, um, raster? Uh, it, it's actually pretty straightforward, but it is very specific. So uh, I'm just going to start off with my document here and just put a big rectangle no big deal um, now that I have this rectangle we can see here that this box represents the fill of that rectangle and this box represents the stroke if I want to let's start off with cutting if I want to tell the computer to cut this box out there's some things I need to do let me zoom in on it a little bit all right so normally this starts off at one point um, that's pretty much the default for anything that you create like this. Um, but there's two things. The color is important and the weight of the stroke line is also very important. For an example, right now my box is uh, blue. Blue is read by the laser cutter as a vector engrave. So it's going to follow a path, an, essentially an XY path, and the blue tells it to engrave. If I were to change that to red, now I'm telling it to cut. The other component of communicating with the machine is it only reads a vector if it is 0 .001, 0 .001 inches or smaller. And actually, it says point right here. If I were to make it 0.001 or one thousandth of an inch by putting the inch in there, then it actually is equal to 0 0.072 points. Regardless, as long as it's 0 0.001 or smaller on Adobe Illustrator, the computer will read that as a vector. Now, hopefully by this point, you already know what a vector is, but if you don't, there's some reading you can do, which is very, very clear. Um, I'll show that to you once I'm done here. All right, now notice that I don't have any fill here. Anytime we have this diag uh, diagonal red line, this is a blank box. It's not even white. It is totally blank. There's just nothing there. Now, that's very important to understand the distinction between nothing there and white because white will do some other things, uh, but we'll worry about that later. All right, so I have this red box. It is less than 0 .001 inches, so the computer will read this only as a vector cut. Now, like I said, if I change that to blue, it becomes a vector engrave. So it's not going to cut all the way through the material. It's going to have a reduced power and essentially leave a, a marking, a little bit deeper than a marking um, on my material. Now, let's flip this. Let's say I don't want a um, vector engrave. I don't want a vector cut. I just want to uh, shade the entire area, which the laser will do with a bunch of tiny little dots. So many little dots that, it'll look, that it looks like the whole thing is kind of darkened. Now, if I want to communicate that raster effect, I have to use the fill box. So let's say I don't want any outline. I only want a fill. Well, if I choose uh, black, and you want to stay with the color swatches here. We only want to mess with these colors, these RGB uh Blue, red, and black. All right. So let's select my box. Let's tell it I want to fill with black. And for now, we're going to have no outline. So as of right now, the computer will read this box as shade the entire thing, basically as dark as it'll go. Now that said, if you don't want it super dark, you can play with other shades of gray. And the computer will read that, but it's a very inexact science to, to the point of you would have to do a test on a piece of material before your final project to find the right shade of gray that you're looking for. But right now, let's just worry about black. It's either shaded or it's not shaded. Now, if I were to also put a stroke of, let's say, what color do we want, of red to go with it, now... It's going to cut out this box and shade it. And it actually shades first in the order of operations. It rasters before it vectors. So that's a pretty good um, quick explanation. And if you would rather read that explanation, then you can go to um, this file right here, this ULS file creation.